Back here now on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to move on to the New York Giants and what their owner, John Mayer, recently said about basically what's been going on, what the expectations are going forward with this team. Because now that Hard Knocks is pretty much wrapping up, everybody got a real close-up look of what went down with Saquon, how they drafted, how they signed some free agents, you know, maybe revealing more than I think they would have liked just because I don't think it painted the Giants in such a great picture, to say the least. But, you know, it's out there now. Now everybody feels like they know a little bit more than probably the Giants wanted to release up until this point. And where does that leave this team now? You know, the main question is going to be Daniel Jones. And going through Daniel Jones's career, obviously, there was that big improvement in 2022. That's exactly what Giants fans wanted to see out of Daniel. I think it surprised a lot of people. It definitely surprised me almost just coming completely out of the blue and you know going into the playoffs winning a game on the road and you know maybe the game against the Eagles didn't go exactly how you wanted it to but it was as good as you've seen this Giants team play in recent history so because of that the Giants decided to extend them four years 160 million dollar deal going to Mr. Jones but then of course from that point on he gets that uh, a couple off seasons ago, then of course he follows that up with the poor season that he had, you know, um, not playing too well after that. Then he gets injured this past year, and it's not an ideal situation, definitely not validating that contract that the Giants gave him, and it subsequently leads to, you know, hard knocks following up on that contract extension with this off season, how it affected Saquon, and you guys know the whole story, obviously, but What do they do now? You know, they're entering now, getting away from the past officially, past hard knocks, and now they can focus on the future. And where does that leave Daniel Jones? Well, their owner, John Mara, the Giants owner, John Mara, told ESPN recently on Daniel Jones and what they feel, um, what are their feelings around him going forward. He said that, uh, listen, I'm still happy we gave him that contract because I felt he played really well for us in 22. Last year he got hurt and let's be honest, when he was playing, we weren't blocking anybody, so let's give him a chance with a better O-line or better offensive line, excuse me, and some weapons around him and see what he can do. Um and first off, before I say how I feel about that comment on Daniel Jones, um to John Mayer's point, the Giants ranked last in in Pro Football Focus's pass blocking grades they rank 24th in ESPN's pass blocking win rate so he has a point you know he's not you know embellishing he's not exaggerating the Giants you know deficiencies at O-line that is a real thing and it is it does carry a lot of weight obviously because you're talking to a guy now that is big on the support system on quarterbacks especially young quarterbacks so I have to agree with that because I've harped on that point a lot so I can understand that by John Mara, but um, to say that he's happy with Daniel Jones and, you know, just referencing 2022, I'm going to get to the point I want to make, you know, on that reference, but to say that he's happy with Daniel Jones and, you know, trying to create this idea to everybody that they're satisfied with what they've seen, I think that is more of, of an exaggeration, and I'm not too satisfied with that answer just because all throughout this offseason going back to hard knocks we've seen how Joe Shane Brian Dable were pretty adamant about trying to trade up for a quarterback trying to call the commanders the Patriots especially um not so much obviously the Bears because they're they were dead set on Caleb but really the commanders and the New England Patriots especially trying to work out a deal to maybe trade up and get their quarterback that they obviously wanted um, wanted to attain in the draft and that they probably felt had more potential, had more benefit to their football team than the situation currently with Daniel Jones. And when you see that and then you come out after that, if you're John Mayer and say that you're happy with Daniel Jones, it didn't seem like that too much because when you saw it on Hard Knocks, it seemed like John Mayer along with Brian Dable and Joe Shane were thinking about trading up and Mara was pretty, you know, pretty freely, you know, letting this happen. If he truly felt that he was happy with Daniel Jones and that they wanted to honor that contract, you know, and ride it out and, you know, as he said, be happy about it, then you that's not a decision you really have to consider. Yeah, you have to, I acknowledge the fact that you have to keep all your options open, 
um, to maybe benefit you later on. But again, we're talking about about forty million dollars per year for Daniel Jones, and then just to trade up, give up probably a lot to trade up to three or two and take another quarterback while you still have this guy earning about $40 million per year, that doesn't scream too much that you're satisfied or that you're happy, according to John Mara, with what you've seen so far. And John Mara, on that topic, on the idea of trading up, he said that he was just a little nervous about giving up too much to go up and get a quarterback. But again, he was ready to almost accept what Brian Dable and Joe Shane were trying to work up there with a potential trade. But obviously, it didn't happen. The Patriots didn't want to move. The commander certainly didn't want to move. And now that you've chosen this path, you know, you didn't have an easy outlet by trying to trade up to get another quarterback. Now we're talking about the expectations. Now that you have nothing else to really try and change or you have anything else to kind of escape your way through, now you just have to ride this out. And you can't suffer through another... 6-11 6-11 and 11 year like last year, you know, that just can't happen. Up until this point, I think Giants fans have honestly suffered enough. So what is the solution? What are we looking towards now into 2024? What are we trying to attain if you're the Giants, if you're the owner, especially with seeing such disappointing performances? What can we expect? John Mara also touched on that, and he said, uh, he said the following. He said, I obviously want to show significant improvement over last year. But I'm not going to make any specific guarantees or demands or anything like that. But they know what I want to see. They, referring to Brian Dable and Joe Shane, he said that both of them are aware that he expects, in his words, a big step forward after last year finishing 6-11. and And now, a big step forward, what does that mean? If we try to unpack that, well, at least it has to mean probably around 500 I would assume, with feeling that you're okay keeping Daniel Jones. You've already extended him, so it seems like they're pretty adamant about not being open about maybe admitting that this was a mistake on keeping Daniel Jones. So if you're going to ride that, if you're really going to you know, be behind that decision to just keep Daniel Jones on this contract and you want to see a big step forward, I just question what they truly expect out of Daniel Jones Honestly, not only just now, but when they drafted him um, a few years back now, I think going four um, or three years back now, um, just really, uh, that's the biggest question I have. You know, if you're happy to extend Daniel Jones, but you were ready to jump on a new quarterback through this trade, what what were your expectations really with Daniel Jones if you're just trying to jump off to the next best thing already, even after you extended him? Even after you've extended him and you're still thinking about finding a new quarterback, if it's still in the back of your head, uh, that doesn't scream to me that you're fully behind this decision. And for John Mayer to say he expects a big step forward, I don't know if that's too realistic. You know, what are these expectations that they have with Daniel Jones? Do they believe that he is truly that quarterback that could get them to a divisional round, to an NFC Championship game? dare I say, Super Bowl. I don't even know if they believe that now that they've seen him for the last three years as they did back then when they drafted him at sixth overall in that year's draft. And especially with the standard being so high now, you look at the guys that are coming out of college. C.J. Stroud has set the bar like up here. He has set the bar up here after the best rookie year of anybody in the NFL. Um, That's where the standard is now. Thinking about it in his first year, he had an exceptional year like that. Now, subsequently, everyone's going to follow suit to that. And not to mention the guys that have been in the league already for three years like Daniel Jones. If the standard has already risen like if the standard has already risen like it has with C.J. Stroud, you can only imagine what teams now expect out of guys that have been in the league for four years already, what they expect out of them. Hi, Kelsey. Uh, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, but yeah, just on that, just on that topic, those expectations now for Daniel Jones. What do you believe that is after the standard has been, you know, sort of shifted here a little bit? Also, what I didn't truly like too much about John Mara is that um, he referenced back to 2022, and this is what I wanted to say before. He mentioned 2022 like it was a sign, almost that. Daniel Jones was about to turn a corner or something like that. And you didn't know, obviously, what was going to happen in 2023, that he was going to get hurt again. But to reference that now and have 2023 happen 
and still reference back to 2022 and think that he's just on the verge of turning a corner, I think it wouldn't, I don't think it's too crazy to say that um, looking back on 2022 now and seeing how 2023 went, 21, 20 as well, you can point to 2022 as almost being um, an outlier, as almost being an anomaly in Daniel Jones' career, more so than being something that it could be seen as a breakthrough, if that makes sense, right? You're referencing 2022 like you were on the verge of doing something, and then unfortunately he gets hurt. It's not like that was his first injury. He has been carrying these injury problems for a while now. So that's another thing that just stacks up on this, on my doubts really, on what the Giants are really thinking with Daniel Jones and what their expectations are for him if they truly believe they could attain a big step forward, like John Mara says, with Daniel Jones as their quarterback. You also look at the idea of blaming the offensive line. I think it's just an easy out um, for me personally. I don't really like when teams do it. And I'm again, I'm the first guy to point to the offensive line deficiencies and point out the fact that if the team's O-line isn't ready, that the quarterback's just not going to play well. And that's what John Mayer is doing. But the O-line wasn't great back then when they drafted Daniel Jones. So to still be blaming it, at what point do you have to look and just think that this is more of a organizational problem, an evaluator problem, that the offensive line is still not fixed, and you still decided to draft the quarterback, putting him in a bad situation, even though you had Saquon Barkley, I guess that's still a positive, but to draft him still into that situation, you can't blame the O-line then, because you guys are tasked tasked with fixing the O-line, so again, it almost just falls back on the Giants in a way, in that way, and Now you look at it, this is the first year that they're not going to have Saquon Barkley now. Yeah, they brought in Malik Neighbors, but what's it going to look like without a very talented running back back there? That's never happened. Daniel Jones has never been in that situation, so that's going to require a change. And then to put these expectations now on Dable and Joe Shane, I like that he's setting almost an ultimatum, but um, with that being said, it just... It's just not a good situation when you're potentially threatening with restarting this whole thing again. And then, you know, where do we fall on the Giants then? Um, Trying to ride out this contract with Daniel Jones. They have some good weapons, receivers, but like John Mayer says, the offensive line's not great. They're trying to figure out what Daniel Jones can be. I think at absolute max potential, Daniel Jones could probably get you to the wild card round and then a divisional round. If the rest of the team is not exceptional some of the best in their positional groups they're not gonna have any chance of even thinking about going past the divisional round less much so less the conference championship but again it's just been bad planning it seems John Mara I like that he's setting an ultimatum now but he is risking the fact that they are gonna have to restart this whole thing again and it's not a good situation for the Giants um, but it's unfortunate because I like Malik I like some of the weapons that they have on offense but it's just been poorly planned, so that's where I stand on it. That's where John, that's what John Mara, you know, ultimately said about this. Brian Dable and Joe Shane's jobs could be on the line now, so we'll see how that you know affects everybody through the regular season and whatnot. But leave your guys' thoughts on the Giants situation. Do you think this is a quick turnaround, or are we looking towards another long-winded sort of rebuild here? Kelsey, are you ready for the weekend? Yes, yes I am. Um, I'm looking forward to the weekend as I always am, but I'm always looking forward to coming on here and talking with you guys during the week. So that'll be that segment. That'll be uh, my thoughts on the Giants and John Mara. But with that being said, we got some more topics to get to on today's show. The NFL is trying out some new technology, trying it out during the preseason this year, the Sony Hawkeye technology that should help them determine the first down measurements a lot faster than the old chain system that the NFL has had for um, as long as I can remember. So we're going to get into that. What exactly is it? How is it going to work? And is it a good solution for the NFL to integrate now um, sooner over later in this season? So we're going to get to that right after this break. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 